Hi, and welcome to another edition of Chini Vision. This time, it's time for some early 90s platforming action on the 8 bits. In the early 90s, the games market was awash with platform games cashing in on the success of the Sonic franchise. And Codemasters were no exception to this. CJ's Elephant Antics was produced in 1991 by Codemasters, programmed by Genesis Software and converted to the Spectrum by Big Red Software. We're going to look at the Spectrum version first, even though this game originated on the C64. Great tune here on the menu screen. Slightly confusing to select your controls, you have to press caps lock to select joystick. As we scroll across there, you notice the scrolling is very jerky indeed. It's not, it's not pixel perfect hardware scrolling, as we're going to see on the Commodore 64 original version. Also, the scrolling isn't consistent. It only scrolls when CJ gets to the edge of the screen. And a bit like we saw in some of the versions of New Zealand's story the other week. A lot of jumping around. You, you are CJ, and you've been captured to be put into a zoo in England from your home in Africa. But you've jumped out of the plane using your umbrella somewhere over France, and they're going to make your way back to Africa. You've got an unlimited amount of peanuts that you can fire with your trunk, and you can also pick up bombs that you can drop. As you can see, I'm tr here trying to use the bombs tactically to... There we go, just to drop down onto that baddie there, and you have to do quite a lot of that. Oh, and there was some pixel-perfect jumping required. Timing the bombs can be slightly difficult because they bounce when you drop them. So I've just unfortunately missed that snail there. Try again. No, not working. Come on, it's got to work this time. Oh, no. Come on. Come on, got to get this right. There we go. And there's quite a lot of that in the game. A lot of the baddies take more than one hit to kill when you fire your peanuts at them, so bombs are useful because they kill with one hit. We've only got a limited supply. I've got 18 left there, 17 now. And when you jump any distance, your umbrella comes out and you, you can float down, which is also controllable. And here we go, we jump down here. And you can fire bombs and fire peanuts as you float down. I'll try and kill that thundercloud. If I launch a bomb, it always hit me. If I fire a bomb into him, yeah, there we go, I can kill him. Um, see, he's quite difficult to kill with just peanuts. As you'll have noticed, there is a considerable amount of colour clash in this game. It's okay when you're against this blue background here, and you've got the white sprite. When you start getting against the other colours, CJ blends in, which can be a little bit difficult. I, I had this game on my plus three and I played it on an RF connection on a normal TV back when I had this, and it was quite difficult to see where you were at some stage. This is the big end of level baddie on level one, now, now I know how to defeat him, it's just jump behind him and fire a lot of bombs into him, him, and there we go. Got the map for the next level, and we're off to Switzerland. I probably should be showing the Commodore 64 version first, but this is the version I'm most familiar with, having had this. And I'm going to be interested to see what the Commodore 64 version looks like. We had the Spectrum here, and you've got major colour clash going on here. There's so much going on. CJ's three different colours at once there, when I'm against the, the tree trunk there, and the leaves, and the blue background. There's a lot of leaps of faith in um, CJ's Elephant Antics, because the scrolling, sometimes you jump down chasms like this, and you, you're not aware. Now, I knew there, there were spikes at the bottom, because I've played this game before, 
but quite often you jump down places and you've got to try and guess and anticipate what is down there, which is a little bit bad on the design front. Really bad colour clash here on this slope. You've got light blue blocks coming it jutting out of the, the slope that looks really quite messy. That's not really necessary. I don't know why that's happened. Perhaps they've converted the graphics over from the Commodore 64. I'm not sure. This is the only version for the Z80 systems, and all the other versions were programmed by Genesis Software. This version was programmed by Big Red Software, who did all the Dizzy games from Magic Land Dizzy onwards. Interestingly, there is no Amstrad version of this game or the follow-up. I guess they felt possibly it was too difficult to convert with the scrolling. It will work as a flip screen game with static streams, but perhaps that would take too much reprogramming of the game. I, I don't know. But certainly the Amstrad owners missed out on a fairly good platformer here. So on the on the Spectrum, it's, it's an enjoyable platformer game. I have to say well, it's one of the better ones on the system. It is a budget game. They obviously had limited resources to put into it, so perhaps it's not quite that level of polish that could have done with a few more weeks development but it's a fairly solid platformer and, and quite enjoyable so over to the original version and as I say I probably should have shown this one first but I'm going to be interested to see how this actually looks and plays it's got the same tune as the Spectrum version it's copyright 1991 Codemasters and Genesis software development this game was also ported to the Amiga the ST the NES I think, oh, this is very nice. Look at this. The bombs disappear very quickly on the left there, but nice hardware scrolling. A lot faster. This is quite odd to play coming straight over from the Spectrum version. Because on the Spectrum, you don't have quite this level of speed. It's a little bit slower to react. So I'm finding this a little bit odd to play. Um... Yeah, skip forward a bit here, so we float down here, and it's a little bit faster. No colour clash, obviously. I am playing this version with an Infinite Lives cheat, because I want to be able to get a little bit further into the game and see some of the later levels. This is a really nice platform, I must say it's well presented. It's a game that actually is quite similar to New Zealand's story, I guess. Um, it's a budget version of that. So I'm just going to try my trick with that baddie there. Oh no, he doesn't... He comes down a bit further here on the C64, so he can't jump up behind him and... Oh, he's spitting at me! Oh dear! Oh, bonus level. What's this? No, I've got no idea what I'm doing there. <laughs> no, um, <clears throat> that's not something from the Spectrum version. Level 2 does start off quite hard because you have that cloud firing at you. I've, one thing I've noticed is it's on the C64 version. It's a little bit more difficult to fire the bombs. I don't know. When you're in the air, perhaps that's just me. I don't know. It's a little bit harder. Perhaps it's the speed increase, in fact, that makes it harder. In Spectrum, you get more time to think about it. I, I guess that's probably actually it. There's a lot of fairly pixel-perfect jumping needed in, in this game. It really is a platformer in the conventional sense. But, despite the fact it's high derivative, and yeah, we've seen it all before, it's really well put together. And um, for this would have been 3 99 you know, it's a really good game. There's four levels, and we're on to level three now, which is Egypt. You see the Sphinx in the background. They're really nice graphics. Reminds me of Bomb Jack, actually. The levels are really big. Yes, there is a lot of jumping around. It's really good value for money. There are no sound effects on the Commodore 64 version. The music plays constantly, unlike Spectrum, which actually uses its beeper for the sound effects and the AY chip does the music. Onto level four now, which we're back in Africa. 
and there's this is really annoying maze section here that I'm not very good at getting through. There is a two-player mode on Spectrum and the Commodore 64 versions. Works quite well. Um, it's been put in with a bit of thought. I've played it with my friend back in the day a couple of times, I guess. Don't remember really it, it adding much to the gameplay because it, it's not really a cooperative game. There's a lot of pinch points on the various levels where, okay, doubling up the firepower in some places helps, but you've, if you're going to play this in two player, you've really got to be talking to each other, especially because if one of the players goes off the screen, then you lose a life. So you really do have to be working cooperatively. So overall, CJ's Elephant Antics is a really polished platform game on budget. Spectrum version is the version that I played originally on my Plus 3 in the early 90s. It's a really good game. The scrolling, once you compare it to the Commodore 64 version, is rough. And the gameplay is slower. But if you've only ever played the Spectrum version, it's not really much of a problem. What is a problem is some of that colour clash that's going on. Because there's so many colours blending in. At least you've got a really good RGB connection, as I've been showing here. It's really difficult to see what's going on which is a bit of a shame because when CJ is against the blue backgrounds it's all perfectly fine it's only when he's against those green backgrounds and other colour backgrounds it becomes a problem it's got a great tune it's got four levels to play through really good Commodore 64 version wow it really is a console quality game on the 64 one question I've been asking myself about the Commodore 64 version here is is it better than the version of New Zealand story we saw the other week and well, in terms of graphical presentation, yes it is, because the Commodore 64 version of New Zealand Story is a little bit ugly. In terms of gameplay, I'd say they're probably about even, perhaps CJ edges it slightly, although there's more to see and do in New Zealand Story, certainly. It's a really good example of what can be achieved by a budget software house and a budget developer on the 64. Really good game. <laughs>